bad the beginning was to fail. Well, so we are in our apartment. Well, we're in the kitchen of the apartment right now. Well, Fiona moved here actually a few months ago. So she moved in, um, well, way before, like April. And I moved here a few weeks ago. We have um, our neighbors from upstairs who are really kind. Um, we have lots of blender people, obviously. There's Raymond, our cat. I mean, we have to mention them off. It should be a bit colder in the apartment. That fits very nice. Do we like this? I'm not sure. I hope you do. I like this. Uh, How is it in Japanese? Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> it's Japanese. Uh, it's Chinese and Dutch. Chinese? And Dutch, yeah. I was feeling a bit chilly. <laughs> It's been very exciting coming to Amsterdam. There's... Like, so far, there's not been a lot of downtime. I mean, it's been really nice. I mean, the first weeks, obviously, uh, well, I was alone because Falk was still in Vienna. So, like, I had also to wait for him to actually move in so we could start, you know, settling in here. Well, the first time we meet was at the Blender conference last year, so... And then when I got interested in working for Blender, I started talking with him more and more. And like, we really got along. Hit it off as like, oh, we have so much in common. Like, it's really easy to talk to you. He loves explaining stuff. Uh, in the last week of um, 2022, she came to Vienna. And that was basically when our relationship started. So that was um, New Year's. Um, and since, 2023, we've been together. Because we don't work, you know, um, together, together, uh, we don't work on the same projects, we don't work on the same exact uh, part of Blender, um, then I think it does give us some air. <laughs> the, the story is that she, she had her 30th birthday in March. Actually, on, on March the 30th. <laughs> um, and so I got her these earrings. Those are the only ones in the world, because um, I got them made um, with, at like a churro, churro. Um Basically, as a reminder that we met through Blender, you know. And <laughs> With my glasses, yeah. So, where are we? Look, can we go over this first? Yes. Get the picture um, in hand. What this team needs upstairs is a development manager who has a full-time job. Mm. And that's a, a person who understands how development works, what it means to do uh, all the things that developers do. And that's a different type of job than helping them fill in their time sheets. Oh, come on, you're reducing my work to like... <laughs> uh, but, or helping them fill in a uh, uh, project. Yeah. Like, well, that, like well, this week you do that, and then we do that. I mean, if you don't know what it is to develop, you should not be... Because for animation, you, you know what it means when an animator says that it's I've learned. All that kind of stuff. And you have an idea about when they start bullshitting you or when it's... It's the same for, with developers, honestly. I don't want to take crumbs. Like, I don't want to just be like, oh, is it okay? Can I help with the... No. no. Like, I also want to have to be... Yeah, but you only have two days for this, right? Oh. With the half-time studio. Yeah. And... Half time is operations. Mm -hmm. Operations is a long list of topics. Mm -hmm. And so that means that you have a few hours per week for helping the developers. Yeah. And that means that it's a cramp. You can do a tiny little thing, but I think it's a full time job to help the developers. Somebody who has to be here for 40 hours a week to do this. I think you underestimate me. Like, I do a lot in a few hours. If I'm given 
ownership of things or if I'm given, you know, a structure and not if I'm just helping people. And I understand there are many things I'm lacking. Time is, a, is also an issue. But I do believe you underestimate me and you underestimate how much I'm learning and how much I can learn mm -hmm. and how much also I can bring without being an expert. Okay, but... During and after I felt a bit weird. Um, not great, not bad, but just... I wasn't expecting to the meeting to go this way. Like, I didn't come in with that idea in mind. In my day-to-day -day work, I'm actually not in the development. Um, I'm in the making of a movie, and, and, and I can't... Like, we have a TD, but actually it's Francesco who manages him and gives him, like, tasks and reviews his work. I can't do it because I'm not a technical person. Like, I can't review code. But yeah, lately I've been very, I don't know if it's just with Ton or if it's the way we communicate between each other, um, but he's very opinionated. He's a very opinionated person. Everyone knows it. <laughs> um, and also I don't want to, I don't want to fold. You know, I don't want to be put in a corner I'm not really comfortable or excited about. Ding, ding. So, I talked to the lion, yes. and he's super happy. Ah, yeah. good. So, uh, now you can talk to him. Okay. I think then we can have a deal. Huh? <laughs> You're going to throw you uh, for the lions, you call that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to uh, rip you apart. But then not. I go talk to him, but then we also sit down and... Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm getting way more and more enthusiastic about it, too. So you've got me uh, confirmed. Ah. But uh, the lad did bring up that, uh, but I don't think it's going to be an issue, but mm -hmm. maybe you can preempt it if you have a relationship with one of the developers. Do I? Should not make it complicated. Oh, yeah, no. So I don't have to uh, work, work on that. And I'm doing fine. Yeah? You got the results? What? No. No. Ah. I, 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 like... <laughs> I, I, I should have the results in my email. They send the blood test immediately via email, all the statistics. Nice. And I've seen so many now that I can read it. You got a PhD in medicine? Nah, uh, but I can see the bad indicators yeah. because I know the test when I was sick mm -mm. and the numbers were weird. Yeah. And if those numbers come back, that's not a good signal. And if the numbers stay away from that, it's a good signal. Okay, so it's you check twice a year now? Okay. All right. It's fine. I oh, feel yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no reason. Well, we don't know. Nice. We'll yep, the spinner. Afzonderlijke uitslagen staan er wel. Zie? 17 augustus. Nou, dan kan ik hier gaan zoeken. Kijk eens. Zie, allemaal aan het groen. En vooral de leukocyten, zie ik hier. Dat zijn de dingen die, uh, waar je leukemie van krijgt als je het niet goed hebt. Dat komt bij mij helemaal hier in het, uh, in het hier. Als het goed is, ik kan bijvoorbeeld hier van uh, meer. Op mij gaat het helemaal terug naar toen ik ziek was. Kijk. Zie. Dus dit groen is uh, de uh, acceptabel. En dit was mijn uh, leukocyte. Echt heel slecht. Alles was slecht op het beeld. Ja, maar dan weet je nog niks. Ja, hij zegt niks. Hij zegt Ton, je moet nou uh, naar het ziekenhuis, want het is, het bloed is niet goed. Neem spullen mee voor de nacht. Nou, oké. Okay. Ze was daar al om zes uur en uh, dan heb ik zes uur lang zitten testen. En toen pas kreeg ik het antwoord. Ik zeg, we moeten even rustig met u praten. Meneer, ik heb slecht nieuws voor u. U heeft leukemie. Van de hele zeldzame soort. Wat betekent dat dan? Wat zijn dan mijn verwachtingen en zo? Dan, wat, wat is dat te genezen? Dan kunnen we op dit moment niet veel over zeggen, maar ik kan wel zeggen dat het heel serieus is. 
En uh, de dokter die komt morgen vroeg bij u en die gaat het u allemaal uitleggen. Dus ja, dat was een, een, een beetje de meest verschrikkelijke nacht uit mijn leven. Dat je daar ligt te malen en dan zie ik eigenlijk een beetje. Gelukkig kwam de dokter om zes uur al. Ja, het is een vroege dienst, denk ik. Misschien kwam ze voor mij, maar het was heel vroeg bij. Ah, dat was wel heel fijn, want ik kon toen uitleggen wat dan de behandeling was. En het is wel ernstig. En ja, als ik niks doe, dan leef ik maar een week. Maar de behandeling die, uh, is gericht op volledige genezing. Maar de kans dat ik die week niet zou halen, was aanwezig. Maar ik voelde me niet echt ellendig. Ja, ik was heel moe en alles. Maar ik kreeg gewoon alle geneesmiddelen en dingen. En ik merkte dat, dat wat ik me beter begon, begon te voelen. Daardoor bloedtransfusies en de chemo. En, en de, ik had overal blauwe plekken, maar die begonnen te helen. Hè? Binnen twee dagen was het al duidelijk dat ik... In ieder geval dat het niet erger was. Maar dat de, uh, de grootste ramp was gestopt. En het werd beter. Nou, was een halve... Twee weken uit het ziekenhuis en ik dacht, ik vind het wel goed, ik ga gewoon aan de slag. Unstoppable. Wat moet je anders met je leven? Huh? Wat moet je dan thuis? Daar ja, ben gek van. Slapen. Ja. In 2021, op 1 april of 30 maart, kreeg ik 31 maart, 30 maart kreeg ik de sleutel. Dus uh, ze hadden twee en een half jaar geleden. En dat was tijdens mijn chemo dat ik op zoek was naar huis. Hè? Dus dat is een jaar lang was de lockdowns en ik had uh, de chemo's, omdat ik ziek was. En toen, had ik, toen ik ziek was, besloten, nou ik ga weg. Ik wil, uh, als ik, en je weet niet hoe lang ik nog te leven heb, wat doe ik dan? Kijk, het rare is dat als je geconfronteerd wordt met je, met je eigen sterfelijkheid, dan is er eigenlijk geen moment uh, na je dood. Hè? Dan wen je heel snel aan. Dus je hebt eigenlijk alleen maar een periode tot dat moment. En als je geluk hebt, gaat dat moment lekker ver weg in de toekomst. Want ik ben dus, uh, mijn, voor, mijn vooruitzichten waren goed. Maar uh, de eerste jaar was het onduidelijk hoe goed het was. Het kon best zijn dat ik maar een paar jaar had of zo. Dus waarom zou ik uitstellen leuke dingen die ik zou willen in mijn leven... als je ze ook kan doen nu? He? Dat, dat is, want er is geen toekomst eigenlijk. Dat is alleen maar nu. En toen kwam ik hier dat, dat, dat tegen een... Uh, op, gewoon op, op verliefd, op het rustige gezicht, dit, dit plekje. En daar heb ik echt geluk mee. Want zo'n plek als dit heb ik, ik houd het een beetje in de gaten wat er te koop is en zo. Maar dat is, uh, komt niet vaak voor. Dat je zoveel ruimte en vrijheid en aan het water en de rust. En uh, de levendigheid ook wel. Want er komen bootjes voorbij. Het is niet helemaal dat je niks ziet. Ja, maar dat je dus deze privacy hebt en deze plek in het dorp hier. Zo'n grote tuin. Nou ja, dat is uh, gewoon... Uh, Buitenkansje. Wat ik nu vooral wil doen, is zorgen dat er toekomst is. Ja, dus we hebben het heden is goed afgedekt. Alle blendenprojecten lopen 
bij wijze van spreken helemaal zonder mij. Daar ben ik echt niet voor nodig. Ik ben uh, nodig, ik geef inspiratie of een beetje richting. Maar als ik dat niet zou doen, dan loop Blender gewoon vrolijk verder. Dat is van geen probleem. Maar wat ik dan nog wel wat problemen zie, is van, maar wat dan over vijf jaar? En hoe, hoe kunnen we zorgen dat wat wij doen, dat het relevant blijft? Dat wij moeten zorgen dat al die mooie technieken die nu ontwikkeld worden door de grote bedrijven in de wereld, dat er altijd een variant beschikbaar is voor iedereen hè, onder een vrije licentie. We have an action plan for the next few weeks. It's schedule-wise, tasks, etc. So that Jerika knows what everyone is doing and you know what you're doing and working towards. But also, yeah, she knows when she's coming back, etc. So to get that and to start sharing. Uh, and on the side, obviously, working with a development team. So it's going to take time for that too. Yeah. No. Okay. Anything else here? So those, this thing could take one week, but the rest. Oh no, you said actually you said like. Um, yeah, like point. Four. We we talked about it like it's mm. a new step um, where before we didn't work together at all, and now we we have like some tasks that mm. we work on together. So. It's and I mean, there was this time you came home and you were like so excited about something because the, the guys from the studio, Simon and Andy, they had come up to him asking about some GeoNodes integration for Grease Pencil for the new project. Yeah. And I was, it was on Wednesday because I'm off on Wednesdays. And so you came home talking about this, very excited. And I was like, <laughs> you're gonna need to talk to them about this to your manager <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> like, I, I, I understand this is going to be something, so <laughs> let's not do that right now. Because now I do have uh, stakes on, on, you know, whatever you do and how it influences the studio. Before then, I would have been like, uh, oh, they came to you, that's so cool. Now I'm like, wait, what does it mean this for your project? The scheduling. <laughs> what does it mean for your schedule? Um, so yeah, it, it does change a bit of things, and um, we're gonna have to figure out how to push, to put like limits or boundaries. But I mean, it's it's not much different than me telling him, can you stop looking at the chat in the weekends? You know, <laughs> the blender chat. <laughs> we talked about it. We mm. made sure that you know it was okay for us to be working together and. Mm. Well, you were, feel about it. you were very supportive because you knew from the start that that's something I was interested in. So, you know, he's followed like all the discussions I've had with Ton and Francesco, been, you know, told me you were proud and all. <laughs> so I also know it's not an issue from him. It's um, on his side. It's, it's something we're going to have to be careful of. But I'm already someone who says like, let's stop talking about work sometimes. Yeah, you, you say that a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 because... That's good. <laughs> because that's something I've, I've lived through before, having too much work at home, having too much work on a personal side of it. It's, it's just overwhelming and it can lead to bad things. So I'm quite aware of that from yeah. the start. Yeah. That would need to happen in October then, I guess. I'm almost at the beginning of the week doing code review. Uh, Amelie left a lot of open PRs. But... What's wrong with her? You're not going to do it.